guys, and now we're starting episode 8 of Let's Play Undertale, and last episode, yeah, I'm blanking right now, what even happened last episode, we sort of just went through the Undertale some more, and, you know, I do remember we just fought Temi, I don't know why I'm blinking so much, because I'm literally recording this episode immediately after the last one, but, yeah, uh, I do know one thing, though, we left on a sort of a cliffhanger last episode on visiting Temi Village, which is right through here, so let's go right ahead and check it out. Just me, or does this song remind you everybody of Rugrats? I don't know, I get a Rugrats feel from it. Anyway, these are the Temis. Hoi! Welcome to Tem Village! <laughs> Hoi, I'm Temi, and this is my friend Temi. Oi, I'm Timmy, and this is my friend, my friend, Timmy. <laughs> it's just, Oi, I'm Timmy. Don't forget my friend. Hi, I'm Bob. <laughs> of course, they pulled that. Rich history of Tim. That's it. Just a uh, little Timmy in the front and the tracking in the background for some reason. Oi, you should check out Tim Tim Shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I agree. Should check Tem Shop. <laughs> Humans, such a cute <laughs> Tem. Watch egg. Egg will hatch. Tem. Proud parent. It's hard boiled. <laughs> a statue. Statue of Tem. Very famous. Very. <laughs> I just love them so much. They're just so free and weird. Mushroom dance. Mushroom dance. Whatever could it mean. <laughs> it symbolizes my inner torment trapped here by my high fae. My struggle to pull away. My struggle to escape. But alas, to no avail. I'm gonna talk to him again because it actually didn't really get to see the dance. Mushroom dance. Mushroom dance. If only I could see the world above. But even if the barrier was open, how could I leave? <laughs> it's so weird because you just see the little face there and then it peers up and it's like, whoa, those eyes are his nose. Feeling of being watched. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> Tem heard human allergies to Tem. That okay. Tem understand. Tem also allergic to Tem. <laughs> it's just, I mean, yeah, it's true, it, because of this, it is actually, like, I think it's canon that the character does have a Tem allergy, but it's also canon, apparently, that this Tem has a Tem allergy. WAVES! <laughs> I love this part of the game so much, and, like, it's just great, you feel something. You're filled with detemmination. <laughs> oh, that, that pun's gold. That's straight, straight up gold. Anyway, since we've been hearing so much about the temple, we probably already know and remember that we can actually sell stuff here, so I'm gonna take a bunch of my random gear and start selling it. Oi! Welcome to the Tem Shop! You'll probably recognize this from the channel trailer. Yep. Oh boy. So yeah, we can buy some stuff. Hoi, welcome to Temp Shop. Temp Flake. Heals 2 HP food of Tem. Heals 2 HP. Discount food of Tem. Temp Flake. Expensive. Heals 2 HP food of Tem. Ex but it's expensive. And then if we ever get a thousand G, we can pay for Tem's college. College, Tem pursue higher education. See, there is a thing you can do where if you pay for the college, you'll unlock another thing you can buy that's like super overpowered, but also costs 9,999 9 gold. It gets cheaper the more times you die, just to kind of help you get through the game. So I don't think I'm gonna do that because it would it would involve lots of selling of dog residue, which would take very long time. 
So yeah, I'm just gonna ignore that, and I honestly don't think I'm gonna buy any 10 flakes either, because why would I buy any of these? Just 2 HP? No thanks. But I will sell some stuff. Uh, yeah, I came to sell my bandana. Whoa! You got a bandanas? Mm -hmm. I gotta have that bandanas. But I gotta pay for college. Mm -hmm. Tim always want a bandana. Tim buy bandana for 51G. Yeah! Yeah! And then she makes this <laughs> amazing face. It's beautiful. And then you can sell the toy knife. Let's do it. And we'll sell the stick. 150G. Because you see, you can get so much gold from that. And I'm not going to sell the pie or anything. Those items are too good. Anyway, before I go to pick up the rest of the stuff to sell, real quick, I'm going to talk to her for a bit. Maybe she has some cool stuff to say. Hoi, I'm Timmy. Let's say hello. Hoi! I'm Timmy. Okay. Uh, tell me about yourself. Hoi! I'm Timmy. Uh, that's true. What about Timmy's history? Most Tims have a deep history. Very deep. <laughs> oh, you could have told me about it, but okay. What about your shop? Yeah, yeah. Go to Tim's shop. <laughs> that's it. Let's go then. Boy! Oh, I love this so much. You have no idea how much I love the Temmies. They're just... <laughs> okay, we're gonna make one more trip just to sell the rest of this stuff, because I don't see myself using it anymore. Yeah, so we'll just sell the Tough Glove, get 50 more gold, sell the old Tutu, get 80 gold, and the ball Ballet Shoes for 80 gold. Now, we're swimming in the gold with 692, so I guess it wouldn't take as long anymore for me to get the, uh, you know, college money to pay for it. But yeah, I don't know. I guess now that we're right next to the shop to sell stuff, I can just show you the dog residue and how exactly it looks when you use it. It doesn't really look like anything, to be honest, but maybe we'll get a dog salad. That could be useful. The rest of your inventory filled up with dog residue. Did we get him? Nope. Oh, okay. I'll just sell two of the dog residues just to make room. And see, they don't look that. Like, sometimes they sell for two gold, or like maybe even three. But most of the time, they're only going to sell for one gold. So, yeah, it's an infinite source of gold. But you're going to be sitting here forever trying to get a thousand gold so you can pay for Tim's college. But of course, who wouldn't want to send Tim to college? I mean, she deserves it. She needs to get that college education. She needs to pursue higher education. Anyway, that's about it for the Tims. <laughs> oh man, I love... Like, it's so weird and it's it's a re just a really fun secret if you know about it and to just go visit it. Have like one of the biggest laughs in the game, period. But it's great. And we've got multiples here, so I guess we'll just spare them. And wait a minute. We could spare that one. Maybe if we imitate it a bit. Virtuals fall. Suddenly. Whoa! Whoa! And this one attacks differently too. Instead of exploding outwards, it explodes inwards. I guess it implodes. And instead of a mold. whatever, the mold small, it's a mold big. And it needs some distance, so... I, mean, I guess we shouldn't hug it, because it need, just said it needed distance, so let's unhug it. You don't hug Mold Big. It appreciates your respect for its boundaries. Slime sounds. So yeah, by respecting its personal space, we have bested this foul beast. And can spare it. And get 20 gold, which is a lot to compare to what we normally get zero gold from defeating Mold Smalls, so it's kind of a cool little treat, I guess, to have those instead of the normal Mold Smalls, which can be kind of annoying, because at the most you can only get like two gold. And this room is interesting. Without candles or magic to guide them home, the monsters used crystals to navigate. In this room, it grows darker and darker as time goes on until you're basically going through a dark cave without flash. <laughs> the only analogy I could think of. Anyway, we gotta keep pressing the lanterns, and then it'll light up the room and let you see. But anyway, there's a kind of scattered around. Just wanna make sure you hit them every time you get next to one. Now, now we gotta fight. Watch one, Aaron. Just go ahead and uh, ask for him to clean.
us. Same routine as before. Oh, jeez. Come on, since water up here, thank you. And just go ahead and spare him. I suppose I could just, like, run from these fights. But I kind of like just going through each of the fights and getting gold. And man! Like, I... Well, before, in my other playthroughs, I never equipped both the glasses and the notebook for invincibility. I only equipped the glasses. I didn't realize that it, like, did this much. Like, it, they definitely stack, and you definitely stay invisible. Or invisible. Invincible for, like, an insane amount of time. Like, this is... This is that's insane. I had no idea. But, oh my god, I took... Oh my god. God, I took so much damage there. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's gonna flex himself out of the room right now. Yeah, because we already... That was the third time we flexed. So... I'm gonna try to keep going. If we get another fight, I can just take a turn to eat up and heal. I don't really like wasting the healing items before I get in a fight, because I don't really see the point. Because you don't really miss out on anything when you... I mean, you kind of do, because that's a turn that you could have used to try to get them to spare you. But, I don't know, because you, if you're good enough at dodging the attacks, you can take zero damage and still waste a turn to heal. So, I think wasting your items in the overworld is kind of a, I don't know, kind of a bad thing to do. Anyway, I almost completely forgot that I needed to heal, which would have sucked. So, let's go ahead and eat an ice cream. It should be plenty. Scrub dub dubs. Oh, okay, well this... I forgot that he used the soap attack whenever you don't ask him to clean you, so that was actually very dangerous. Let's go ahead and ask him to clean us. It'd probably be a better idea to run from this fight because it's pretty difficult. Okay, I actually got one. Whoa. I did not think I was going to actually get the crit in that turn. I think it sort of just spawned on top of me. That's kind of funny. Crazy lucky. And let's just unhug this small big. And then I'll have him shoot at us. It's pretty easy to avoid, and before I get hit. And no, we can spare. Man, that fight was actually kind of scary. <laughs> that soap attack, it always freaks me out from Washua. Like, I normally don't have to worry about it because I always try to take care of him first and ask him to clean us, but. And when he uses that, it's pretty. pretty tough to dodge, and it's pretty intimidating. I guess we'll just keep walking down this dark hall. And the Echo Flower here. Some grass. Hmm. Behind you. What? Oh god! Undyne! She, she found us. There's nowhere we can go. Where did that end? Seven. Seven human souls. With the power of seven human souls, our king, King Asgore Dreamer, will become a god. With that power, Asgore can finally shatter the barrier. He will finally take the surface back from humanity, and give them back the suffering and pain that we have endured. Stand human. This is your only chance of redemption. Give up your soul, or I'll tear it from your body. Okay, well she's charging at us, I guess we gotta fight. Nothing else we can do. Here we go. Oh. Undyne, I'll help you fight. Yo, you did it, man. Undyne is right in front of you. You've got front row seats to see her fight. Wait, who's she fighting? H hey, you weren't going to tell my parents about this, were you? <laughs> that's, that's funny. But man, that kid really saved our hide. Can we go through here? Nah, I guess not. I guess we just gotta walk back. And oh, there's a path here that wasn't here before. Echo flowers. You hear past conversation. Hmm. If I say my, if I say my wish, you promise you won't laugh at me? Past conversation. Of course I won't laugh. And someday. I'd like to climb this mountain we're all buried under. Standing under the sky, looking at the world all around. That's my wish. Your laughter. Hey, you said you wouldn't laugh at it. 
sorry. It's just funny. That's my wish, too. Oh, little adorable little bit of the uh, plot there. It's actually really sweet. However, there is a prophecy. The angel, the one the turtle spoke of, the one who has seen the surface, they will return, and the underground will go empty. Either the angel will save the monsters and bring them to the surface, or he'll be the mark of their ultimate demise. No! Hey, buddy. Hey, you, you, thanks for saving me back there. You, yo, I know I'm not supposed to be here, but I want to ask you something. And I've never had to ask anyone this before. Um, yo, y you're human, right? <laughs> Man, I knew it. Well, I know it now, I mean. Undyne told me, um, stay away from that human. So, like, um, I guess that makes us enemies or something. But I kind of stink at that. <laughs> Yo, say something mean so I can hate you. Please? Uh... I mean, you're not good at being an enemy. I'm not good at being mean, man. Sorry. Yo, what? So I have to do it? Here goes nothing. Yo, I... I hate your guts. Man, I... I'm such a turd. I'm... I'm gonna go home now. Sorry, dude. Sorry you couldn't hate me. I mean, it won't... Hey! Yo, wait! Help! I tripped! Oh, well, Undyne's right over there, but we gotta save her. Yo, dude. If... If you, you want to hurt my friend, you're gonna have to get through me first. gone. Yo, you really saved my skin. Guess being enemies was just a nice thought. <laughs> we'll just have to be friends instead. Man, I should really go home. I bet my parents are worried sick about me. Ah, thanks little guy. Later, dude. Man, you really... I might have saved you, but without you, man, I would... I would have been doomed there. Thanks so much, man. Lots going on right now, with the little guy finding out we're human, but still being our friend, and Undyne, of course. Speaking of Undyne... Seven. Seven human souls, and King Asgore will become a god. Six. That's how many we have collected thus far. Understand? Through your seventh and final soul, this world will be transformed. First, however, as is customary for those who make it this far, I shall tell you the tragic tale of our people. It all started long ago. Oh, you know what? Screw it! Why should I tell you that story when you're about to die? Gah! Man, badass. You! You're standing in the way of everybody's hopes and dreams. Alphys' history books made me think humans were cool, with their giant robots and flowery swordswoman. But you? You're just a coward, hiding behind that kid so you could run away from me again. And let's not forget your wimpy goody two shoes shtick. Oh, I'm making such a difference by hugging random strangers. You know what would be more valuable for everyone if you were dead? That's right, human. Your continued existence is a crime. Your life is all that stands between us and our freedom. Right now, I can feel everyone's hearts pounding together. Everyone's been waiting for their whole lives for this moment. But we're not nervous at all. When everyone puts their hearts together, they can't lose. Now, human, let's end this right here, right now. I'll show you how determined monsters can be. Step forward when you're ready. <laughs> She's really 
serious about this. Even though she's technically our enemy, I gotta respect how serious she wants to, she is about saving everybody. So, let's go ahead. Nothing else we can do but confront her. That's it then. No more running away. Here I come. On guard. Just like the pirates did, he's, she's changing our heart's color. And this time, we've turned green. I mean, quite, don't quite know what that means yet, but of course we're about to find out. Tell one died, her attacks are too easy, even though she hasn't actually attacked us yet. The bullets get faster. As long as you're green, you can't escape. Unless you learn to face danger head on. You won't last a second against me. Uh... Okay, that was pretty easy. Okay, so basically how this fight works is that little blue line there is our shield, so we want to make sure that blue line is facing those spears every time they come towards us. And when she said you're green and you can't escape, it's actually true. When we're green, we physically can't use mercy to flee. In fact, we don't even have that option. But when she turns us red, that's when we have to flee. Because she's never going to let us just spare her. She's too. She's got too much of a fighting spirit to just do that. So, we're just gonna have to wait until we're back to red. Not bad, then how about this? Although, even when I turn red, I might just, like, skip one chance to run away just to show you guys how much this fight works. Cause it's actually really interesting. It gets really difficult, so... Let's just hope I don't die and screw things up. Undyne holds her fist in front of her and shakes her head. Uh, we'll just... Keep challenging her. Might seem like a dumb idea, but whatever. Can't do anything else. For years we've dreamed of a happy ending. Plus, if I skip most of this fight, then we'll be missing a lot of this dialogue. And a lot of the fight dialogue is really cool. Walter Fist shakes her head. This time we'll plead. You told Undyne you just want to be friends. She remembers someone. Her attacks become a little less extreme. And now, sunlight is just within our reach. Yeah, I gotta concentrate on this, because man, like, that didn't seem too difficult, but you really gotta concentrate, and sooner or later it's gonna get even worse, also this is great. Undyne Suplex is a huge boulder, just because she can. I mean, why not? If you can do it, just do it, man. It's great. And we lowered her attacks, made her at least made them less extreme, a bit more. I won't let you snatch it. Yeah, I missed that dialogue, and now I hate myself because I love the dialogue during the fights. Ugh. This is impatiently. Getting really impatient here. Let's see. Yeah, I'm bleeding more together. Yeah, enough warming up. Okay, and we hit it. Okay, well now we're red, and you gotta make sure you move out of the way of that spear, because you can't get hit by that. Let's, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna stay, because we haven't even gotten hit yet, so we're actually doing pretty well. I'm gonna stay and show you what she does when you're red and stuff. And I don't think I'm gonna challenge her bleed anymore. I'm just gonna check her once, because we've never done that before. Undyne, seven attacks, zero defense. A heroine that never gives up. Yeah, you're tough. Just gotta dodge these. There's a lot of them, so you gotta be careful. But in the end, you can manage to dodge them all. Flashes a many menacing smile. And we don't need chicken hands to spare. But even if I spared you. That's the other thing she uses when you're red. Uh, can be easy to dodge, but also can be difficult if you get hit. And we're green again, so we're gonna have to wait until she turns us red one more time, and then I'll start to run away. No human has ever made it past Asgore. And that was close. Oh man, I'm gonna start having to really concentrate during those parts. It gets very difficult. Honestly, killing you now is an act of mercy. Okay. I don't know how I'm doing this well. I normally did like, the first time I ever did this fight. This was like the first fight in the game where I really had a ton of difficulty and just kept dying over and over. So I'm actually surprised at how well I'm managing to do while commentating. Undyne Tower's threatening like just keep sparing. So stop being so damn resilient. No. Nope. And okay. Oh, now we're red. Oh, I. Man, I could have gotten out of this fight without getting hit once, but it, oh, that's oh my god, that makes me so angry. Okay, 
Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and flee. Escape, and once you run, you gotta get going. You gotta run, because she's chasing you, but she will start the fight again. And she turned to screen. Okay, so we can't escape again this time. You've escaped from me for the last time! So basically, that's how this boss fight works. You're gonna wanna be able to wait until you're red, escape, and then run away in the overworld until she tries to fight you again. So, it's kind of a really interesting fight. A lot of these fight in the game, wait, Alphys told me humans were determined. But yeah, as I was saying, a lot of the fights in this game do have that sort of interesting factor to them where you gotta do things completely different than normal any other RPG. But yeah, but you saw there, those yellow arrows or spears are different. I see now that she, what she meant by that. They actually go in the opposite direction they come from, which can be extremely annoying and uh, difficult to dodge, especially when they are moving a lot faster and there's a lot more of them. What did I just say? We have that invincibility video. Invincibility. Invincibility. So that really helps. Stuttering all over the place. Determined to end this right now. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Oh man, that could, those two came out of nowhere. I almost just forgot to dodge those. How is threat on right now? Are you gonna turn me right after this, please? I'm getting nervous now. No. Oh my God, please. Right now. Come on. Okay, are you serious? You're... Do I need to challenge her? I don't even know if I do. It smells like sushi. Oh yeah, because she's a fish girl. Um, let's bleed. Okay, this worked. Maybe I just need to keep bleeding. I didn't know if that actually had any effect on it, but... This one's actually pretty easy to dodge. Oh my god, can you please? Okay, bleeding's working. Yeah, I die already, you little brat. Okay. Oh jeez! I'm gonna get hit again. Oh, okay, we're red. Ooh, okay, let's flee. That was getting pretty fishy. Pun definitely intended. So that def that part definitely throws me off. Because, like, I'm thinking I'm gonna need to run up, but then it just switches and goes sideways. Are you not gonna turn me green? Stop running away. She didn't turn me green. Okay, I'm gonna keep running away. <laughs> just completely disregard what she just said. Welcome to Hot Lands. Oh, we just got a phone call. Hey, what's up? I was just thinking, you, me, and Undyne should all hang out sometime. I think you would make great pals. Let's meet up at our house later. Like, what an odd time for him to give us a phone call, but okay. I mean, I'm not opposed to hanging out with her if she stops trying to murder my face. Come back here, you little punk! Nope. Oh. Damn it. I press spare instead of flee. Okay, I just gotta make sure I don't get hit, and please don't turn me green. Please, for the love of God, okay. Flee. Keep running, keep running, keep running. Keep running. No, I'm sorry, Sans, can't talk to you right now. Oh, we made it. Okay, that's the end of the fight. Armor. So... Hot. These are the hot lands. But I can't... Give up. And oof, that doesn't look good. Uh, there's a very convenient water cooler right here. It's a water cooler. Take a cup of tea. Your tea. Why did I say tea? Take a cup of water. Yeah, she really looks like she needs it. Give Undyne the water. Yeah, she, I mean she's also a fish lady. I feel like she'd be dead by now, but let's just pour some water on her. Make her feel better. Even though she tried to kill us, but I don't know. Back up. Man. She's so taken aback that we actually helped her that she just walks away. Yeah, that's the fight with Undyne. Pretty difficult if you ask me, but... Yeah, especially if you're a first-time player and you didn't know that you had to flee. I forgot about this guy. Okay, gay, gay, gay. I was thirsty, so I came over here from Waterfall to get a drink. I mean, there's water all over the place in Waterfall, so I don't know why you'd come here to the Hotlands instead, but there just happened to be a water cooler there. 
But yeah, that was, that was the fight with Undyne, and pretty much did everything I aimed to do in this episode. We got out of the waterfall, we went to Temi Village, we fought with Undyne herself. So yeah, today was a pretty intense episode, and plot heavy. Sort of. Well, the waterfalls in general is very plot and lore heavy. Anyway, uh, we're coming up on 30 minutes, so that's the end of this episode. So I'm just gonna save here. Seeing such a strange laboratory in a place like this, filled with determination. Yeah. By the, by the way, there's a laboratory over there. Yep. See what that is later in the next episode. So yeah, see you guys next time.